This video is going to discuss an odd behavior that Visual Basic for Application has and uh, and I think that for some of you this may be a little bit confusing but actually it's more of a matter of really paying attention to what you're doing when you're writing your program and what's happening with your program. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of take a look at some code and uh, kind of puzzle over what might be happening. <coughs> so my code is quite simple. It, uh, it's just going to declare two variables, a numeric variable and a string variable. So there's nothing really mysterious about that. You'll notice these two lines assign values to our two variables. We assign the number 123 to the numeric variable. And we assign the string 123 to the string variable. So nothing too mysterious there. You'll notice that down here we uh, go ahead and just assign, now wait a minute, whoops, what's happening here? You'll notice that I'm assigning a string to my numeric variable. Now that's pretty bizarre. Um, and also notice the next line down, it assigns a number to a string variable. Now this seems to be a little bit backwards, but what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and step through the program and show you what's going to happen when we do this. By stepping through the program again, when I have the locals window open down here below, you can actually see what's happening in the computer's memory. So I'll go ahead and step. And of course, at the beginning of the program, the numeric variable has a zero, and the string variable is an empty string. There's nothing in that string variable. So I'll step down, and I'll execute these two lines. And notice then the numeric variable has a number 123 and the string variable has a string 123. Notice the quotes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute these next two lines and let's see what happens. <coughs> well by executing those last two lines, this line where I actually assigned the string variable to the numeric variable, it actually converted that string 456 into a numeric value and stored it in that number, in that numeric variable. Um, same thing here on this line where I said take this string variable and assign this number to it. Um, you'll notice that the string that's got stored is actually the string 456. So what's happening here, and this is very important for you to understand, is that Visual Basic will do automatic conversions for you between data types. Now this sometimes can be a good thing, but it sometimes can be a very bad thing because you can get very bad bugs in your program, errors in your program that are very difficult to find simply because Visual Basic is doing this automatic conversion and it's not telling you that it's doing it. It just does it. Maybe you didn't intend it to assign that string 456 to that numeric variable and you wish that Visual Basic would have died on you there and told you that you'd made that mistake. Well, it just automatically does it. Now, let's take a look at this next line where we say take 456 as a string and concatenate it 789 and store that. So what's it going to store? Is it going to, well, I guess you might think it takes 456 and actually sticks it together with glue like we've been talking about, 789, and stores that value. Well, let's see what happens when we execute that line, F8. And indeed, it has stored quite a large number, 456,789 in our numeric variable. Now what's this one going to do? This one says take 456, add it together, and then store that value. Well, I'm kind of thinking it's going to take the 456, add it to 789, which is 1100, 1200 and something, and then put that value into our string variable as a string. Well, let's execute the line and see what it does. And it did. It's 1245, but it's a string that's actually stored there. Now we're going to get kind of crazy here. We're going to actually take this string 12 and add it to a numeric 12. Now, your guess is as good as mine is what this might do, but if Visual Basic does automatic conversions, Visual Basic might say, okay, this is an addition, and to do addition, we need a number, so I'm going to convert this 12 string to a 12 number and add it to 12, so I should get 24. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Let's execute that and see what it does. And indeed, that's exactly what it did. It stored 24 into that numeric variable. Now let's see what this one's going to do. This one says, take this string 12 uh, and add it to this string 12. Well, again, because we have addition here, I'm thinking it's going to say, okay, I'm trying to do 
a new numeric addition, I better convert this to the number 12, and then I can add it to this 12 and get 24. So I'm thinking it's going to do the same thing. Let's see what happens. Indeed it did, but notice again, it stored the string 24 in there. Again, it's not a number. Now let's take a look at this next one. This next one's kind of entertaining. This next line says, take the string 12 plus the string 12. Okay, now the temptation on this one is to think that the addition is a numeric addition. So Visual Basic will take this 12 and add it and make it a number, and then take this 12 and make it a number, add them together and get 24. All right, well, let's execute and see if we do that. And we didn't do that. Notice what we got. We got 12, 12. We got 1,212. Well, what happened in this particular case is that Visual Basic actually will allow you to use the plus operator to add these two operands on either side of that plus. In other words, it says take this string and concatenate it to this string. So it takes the 12, glues it onto the other 12, so we get 12, 12 as a string. Then it converts it to a number to store it into this numeric variable and get the value 1,212. Alrighty then. Now this line right here is pretty much what you'd expect. It's going to take 12 and concatenate it on 12 and store it in a string. But better do that. Let's check and see. And indeed, we got the 12, 12 there too. Now this next line is a little bit crazy. It says, take the string 12 and add it to the string high and store it into this numeric variable. Well, what do you think it's going to do? Hmm. That's kind of tricky because this doesn't look anything like a number on the right here. High, that's not a number. Let's go ahead and execute that and see what it does. Ooh, it says we have a type mismatch. So basically what it's telling me is that I'm trying to take a number, because it converts that automatically to a number, and add it to a string. You can't add a number to a string like this. So that died. Up here it worked because we actually took a number and added it to a string that looked like a number. Here we're taking this string that looks like a number, it converts to a number, and trying to add it to something that doesn't even look like a number. So Visual Basic dies on that. So I can hit the debug and it'll pop there and say, Oop, that line's got a problem. So we can't actually execute that line of code. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll put a breakpoint here. Uh, actually, um, let's stop the program and comment this line out right here and put a breakpoint right there so we can run all the way down to that statement. So I'll hit go and it runs all the way down and now it's saying okay we're gonna take the number 12 and try to add it to high and store it in a string. Okay now hmm I don't know if that'll work or not. Let's just see what happens. We'll hit F8 type mismatch again it's trying to do addition with a string and it cannot do that. So let's go ahead and hit the uh, end button on that one. And this time let's uh, move our breakpoint down here and put a comment on that because that line is in error. We cannot have that line in our program. So let's hit the go. Now this one is going to say take the 12 and use glue to glue it onto high. So what we're saying here is we don't want to add the 12. Even though that's a number 12, we don't want to add it using addition to high. We want to just go ahead and glue it. So the question is, is will Visual Basic take that 12 and convert it to a string and then glue it onto high? Well, let's hit F8 and see what happens. And indeed it did. And so in the string, we have 12HI in that string. So the most important thing you need to take away from this is you need to understand that Visual Basic will try to convert numbers to strings and try to convert strings to numbers as it can but if you try to do something that it just can't do, your program's going to crash. So my basic idea, my most, you know, the kind of rule of thumb is use the correct data types for what you want to use and try not to mix them. Try not to try to add strings to numbers and get confused like that. So be very thoughtful when you're declaring your variables and be very thoughtful when you're writing your program statements that you're working with numbers or you're working with strings and you're trying not to mix them up. Thank you.